Good morning, everyone. Um, nice to see so many people here, as everyone else has said already. I think, uh, for me, it, it, it's nice to see some familiar faces, uh, because that, not least, describes the dedication that is, is within this whole marine energy sector, but also new faces, because that reminds us of the impetus that is, that is catching a pace now. Um, as it says on the screen, I don't know whether you can see, but just to let you know, the slides are available afterwards anyway. Uh, I am the priority controller for energy, uh, affectionately known by my team, and ever um, more being known outside my team circle as the fat controller. Um, energy is the portfolio, so just, just to put it into context before I break down to marine energy, um, it's priority three in both the West Wales and the East Wales programmes which deals with um, marine energy, with community renewable energy, and with energy efficiency within the Welsh housing stock. But I also have a purse within priority one, which is research and innovation. So anything that uh, falls into the low carbon bracket uh, and is research and innovation, that's my responsibility too. Um, the other thing I need to say before I move on as well, a, a common question is, when do the programmes run? Well, they're live now. The, the official titles are 2014 to 2020, although we are allowed to spend money up until 2023. So actually, we've got nine years to deliver these programmes. What am I going to go through? Just, just explain what uh, the requirement of the programmes are, how much money's in there, which I think is the most important question here. What are the priorities? What's in the pipeline? And actually, how do you, if you haven't already, engage with WEFO? So in terms of marine renewables in ERDF, we have a focus. The specific objective is up on the screen there. And if you can't read it, I'll read it out. It's to increase the number of wave and tidal energy devices that are being tested in Welsh waters and off the Welsh coast, including multi-device array deployments and thereby establishing Wales as a centre for marine energy production. And I think the majority, if not all people here, recognise that that's, that's our ambition, is to make Wales the, the place to be. Um, in terms of getting money out of me, how do you do that? Uh, well, the results that I have to deliver to Brussels is an increase in the amount of megawatts installed. Um, we're looking for 20 megawatts. Now, of course, we all know that that measurement at the moment is only at UK level. Um, Sean's already mentioned some of the targets there, but we're looking at 20 megawatts, uh, and it would be nice if we could do 20 megawatts in Wales, so that's my ambition. And the target group uh, is, is any business or organisation involved in the marine energy industry. So, um, yeah, we need emphasis on the result. If you're not going to deliver that result or help to deliver that result, then the short answer is I'm not really interested in, in having a conversation. But if you feel you can help to deliver that result, then please come and knock on the door. Um, and in terms of the tar target group, again, the overall emphasis of, of the ERDF programmes is about jobs and growth. So although we're focusing here on marine energy, it is that jobs and growth. So what are you going to bring to Wales for the long term? So how much money? That won't change. It's 100.5 million euros. Uh, that's a nice, easy figure to, to work with, isn't it? But we all know we deal with exchange rates. So what, in effect, does that mean in sterling? When we negotiated the programmes, we were at 125 euros per pound, which meant when we published the programmes for the marine energy special, uh, specific objective only, we had 80 million pounds sterling. Um, I don't know what it is today, but yesterday we were back around the 140 mark. So you can see already we've lost nearly £9 million sterling to the programme. So what that means is for every euro cent fluctuation we lose £600,000. Or we gain, depending on which way it goes. So you can see there are issues there around, um, around the markets in terms of when we uh, might approve a project and when claims are made, and then subsequently when we make claims to Europe, those different exchange rates can have an impact. So what we're looking to do is approve as many projects as we can in Euros. So you take the risk. <laughs> uh, 
Um, what are our priorities? Well, quite simply, we've already heard about them, There's the two demonstration zones. The reason for that is that they have Crown Estate permissions in place at a certain level, which will become full, full permissions eventually. There can be a generic environmental impact that is made uh, for that particular zone, for the south or the north one. And grid connections can be put in place. So what that does is reduce the risk, the cost, the timescales for any individual developers wanting to come along. And it also means that uh, an individual developer may not necessarily need to come for ERDF funds because it's reduced everything far enough to actually be able to, to drop into the water there. So we're looking at time savings, cost savings, risk reduction, and that, uh, that less call on, on, on uh, WEFO funding. It doesn't mean that we won't offer the funding, and it doesn't mean that the 100 million euros are all being put into the demonstration zone. That's far from true. Um, but they are the priorities. So what about the pipeline? Uh, well, we've got friends here today from both Minesto and Wavesub. They're already in our business planning phase. Uh, and dare I say that uh, uh, one, of the, one of those two is quite close to approval, uh, and the other one is, is sailing along nicely, if you'll pardon the pun. Um, I think what Wavesub has taught me and my team is um, there is a clear need to accelerate the demonstration zones um, because um, I'm sorry I'm talking about you and you're here, but uh, you, you do need uh, a facility to, to test your device before demonstration zones are ready. And so, um, you know, there's no option in, in Wales. We're probably going to have to go out to, to England. Um, so that really does emphasize the need to, to get the demonstration zones underway. Um, and there are a lot of other people, I mean, people in the room um, already that, that have had discussions with, with me and my team, uh, and we're open for any further discussions with, with those people or with any newcomers to us. Um, and all those other developers that I've, I've been dealing with so far, they, they, de they range from um, a first demonstration uh, of, of maybe a quarter scale device right up to 10 megawatt arrays. So again, the appetite is clearly there. So how do you engage with, with WEFO? Well, again, that's another simple one. You just get in touch with my team, we'll have a chat, we'll talk to anyone. Um, we, we're really keen to make this work for Wales. So if there's something out there we don't know about, we'd like to know about it and see how that fits within the portfolio and what we may or may not be able to do. What's along the bottom there is, is uh, a very brief description of our um, application process. So if I can run through it very quickly, the, the first arrow is pre-planning and that is all about um, the discussions I, I talked about uh, a minute ago, and that's having the, the uh, actual discussion around, is it something that's going to fit our programs? Is it something that is in the economic and prioritization framework arena for Wales? And then we move into business planning, which is where you start to build up the, the, the business plan itself with us. You have a dedicated officer from my team, and we shape it together to make sure that it, it fits uh, the program requirements. Mobilization is a new phase, so when we get to approval, we don't expect you to go straight into delivery. You will have, let's say, up to 12 months. We'll negotiate the time scale with specific milestones for delivery, for instance, procurement, um, setting your team up or whatever, and then we go into delivery. So that's, that's the process we, we move, move along with. And the delivery, of course, is with milestones. Uh, my penultimate slide, um, again, as I say, these, these slides will be made available to you afterwards. Uh, I'm the priority controller. My assistant is Amanda Thomas, who's a project development manager, and she manages three project development officers. Uh, the mailbox there is a generic one, so the five of us have access to that. So you can be assured if you mail that, somebody will pick it up. Uh, telephone number there is Amanda's number, I'd rather than put mine on the screen. Um, so. That's who we are, that's what we're about. Um, I'm here all day if anybody wants any one-to-one -one discussions or otherwise. I did do a final slide, which was any questions, but we've got a Q&A at the end.